Dear friends, we've reached the moment in our Sabbath worship when we ask God's blessing on those in our community in need of healing. Tonight, though, I believe we all ache for it. On the heels of a week that witnessed the threat of terror in our city and country by a political extremist and the shooting of two African Americans in Kentucky by a white supremacist, came the most horrific act of anti-Semitic violence in our nation's history. The slaughter at the Tree of Life Synagogue proves once again the enduring menace of the world's longest hatred, the hatred of Jews, which statistics demonstrate to be on the rise in America today, which was on display again just Thursday night when a vandal scrawled, kill all Jews inside Brooklyn's Union Temple. As one of the oldest and most visible synagogues in New York, Temple Emmanuel has received expressions of grief and support from so many throughout our city. Last Sunday, Mayor de Blasio chose our congregation as the site for an interfaith solidarity rally and prayer service, which gathered clergy of all faiths to our front door. And we are grateful to him, to Cardinal Dolan, and to all the other government and religious leaders locally and from around the world who have reminded us that we are not alone, that they stand beside us. I want to acknowledge the presence tonight of the Consul General of the Philippines, Ambassador Claro Suarez Cristobal, along with countless other non-Jews who have chosen to stand with the Jewish community this Shabbat. We thank you deeply. In this season of astonishing ideological polarization, every American should be uplifted by this moment of national unity, which signals to us that our country's continued slide into divisiveness can be reversed if people of faith and common cause would stop it. And Temple Emmanuel is beyond grateful to our city's police officers who stand not beside us, but in front of us to protect us, ensuring that our houses of prayer are indeed sanctuaries from such violence as the Jewish community and the city of Pittsburgh suffered last Shabbat. After the attack, Pittsburgh's rabbi, Dr. Danny Schiff, wrote these stirring words. They took their last breath wrapped in tali tote, and we will bury them the same way, eternally precious, and folded within the fabric of our people. They took their last breath in a building named for life, and in their spirit we will ever cherish life's beauty, no matter how thick the darkness. They took their last breath in a house of prayer where people aspire to be the finest they can be, and in their names we will continue to reach for the heights. They took their last breath, uttering words that reject the lawless, and recalling them, we will refuse to allow evil to prosper. They took their last breath, believing in a better tomorrow, and we will never forsake that vision, come what may. They took their last breath as proud Jews, devoted to their heritage, and in their honor, that is exactly how we will now continue on. Devastated, bereft, but utterly resolute. May their memory bless us all. Our hearts reach out to their families. We mourn beside them. Temple Emmanuel, through our philanthropic fund, has already sent its support to them, to those wounded, to their synagogue, and to the Pittsburgh Jewish community, home to the friends and family of many of our own temple's members. 
in religious school this week, a number of our students asked their teachers how God could allow such calamities. Parents, too, wanted to know how to answer the question. The same question generations of Jews have asked about the presence of evil in the world and about history's most catastrophic anti-Semitic violence, the Holocaust itself. Where was, where is God? Certain realities exist beyond God's control and humanity's free will is one of them. But that doesn't mean God is absent, not at all. God is ever present in our conviction of what is right and good, in our compassion and determination, in the fortitude we find within us, in the outstretched hands that reach toward us to steady us until we are able to stand on our own again and in the strength we give to others. Nothing more clearly manifests God's presence than such courage. And so we, as a Jewish community, will do what we always do. What every individual who has ever suffered tragic loss or illness or fear of an uncertain tomorrow must do we will put one foot in front of the other and keep going. When the unraveling of civility and decency and our sense of security weakens our spirit, we will draw strength from the timeless ideals of our ancient faith, the Torah, our Eitz Chayim, our tree of life. Together, we will stand up for its values of justice and compassion by standing up against the nativism that emboldens bigots. Together, we will bear witness to the sanctity of human life by demanding meaningful gun safety legislation. And aware that Robert Bauer's loathsome rhetoric targeted Muslims and refugees too, together we will proclaim our belief that every human being of every race, ethnicity, faith, and gender identity or expression is fashioned in God's image by standing shoulder to shoulder with other minority communities also under attack. And we will stand shoulder to shoulder with one another. In the immediate aftermath of trauma, it can be so difficult to envision a brighter tomorrow. That may be why our tradition wisely teaches us not to offer consolation to the bereaved while their dead still lie before them. But during Shiva, we gather in the house of mourning and stand close beside those dear to us so they may feel our strength as their support. We are in Shiva. For these were our brothers and sisters in faith. And we are a house of mourning. For all Jewish congregations are one with the congregation of Israel. And so let us now rise and stand shoulder to shoulder together, close to one another. And let us offer our prayers for healing for those wounded in the Tree of Life synagogue last Shabbat for the families of those murdered, for our people bound together in history and in destiny, and for all those among us or in your hearts who may be in need of healing. I'd invite you to share their names aloud now. We continue singing our Misha Beirach, our prayer of healing, inside your service handouts. Rifaidu Adonai, Venera Fe. 
Oshienu v'nivashaya el karov l'chol korav ach karov l'irea yisho. We pray for healing of the body. We pray for healing of the soul, for strength of flesh and mind and spirit. We pray to what's can be whole and unrefined. Oh, please heal us now. Refuad ha nefesh, refuad ha guf, refuash. Refuah, refuah, shalem.